Hello everyone, it's Michael again. And we're going to be doing Smart uh, Suite Library for new users. So if you're a new user, we're going to show you some fundamentals that need to be addressed before you start using the system. Okay, so it doesn't matter what system you've come from. We have our own parameters that you need to address and look at. And I can assure you that if you uh, run these parameters, you will not have a problem with circulation or borrowing file items on the system. OK, so that's very, very, very important that you understand them so that you can then manipulate them to get your library to run the way you want. So we're going to be talking about the mandatory, necessary, absolutely essential things that you need to do before you start using Smart Library. Now, uh, Smart Suite Library. Now, if you want to talk to me, this is a live session, okay? It's not something that's just recorded and you don't have input. you got plenty of input. So... If you are uh, working uh, at the moment at school and you are on the system and you want to talk to me on Wednesday, the 17th of November from 1.15, on the top right-hand side of your screen, there is a chat box. <clears throat> and if you put any questions in there, I will answer them. I don't care what it's about, as long as it's about Smart Suite Library or TV for Education. So today what we're going to do is mandatory parameters before you can start working. Okay, so it's very, very important for you to understand that. So let's go to my screen. First things first, you need to be logged in as an administrator. So how can you tell if you're logged in? Well, that's simple. It'll say sign out. So that means you're in. If you were not logged in, it'll say sign in on the top right hand side. You need to click that and log in. And of course, we are single sign on with any admin system that you want to use, as long as it's not some Mickey Mouse single sign on built by Joe in his backyard or something like that. As long as it's industry standard, we're all about standards. We will embrace anybody's standards to help you. Okay. Once you signed in, you need to click on the menu and as a bare minimum, you should have search, cataloging, circulation, stock take, smart classrooms, reports, okay, patron and configuration. Those are the bare minimums you need to have as an administrator. If you don't have all of them, you need to communicate with us, okay, and tell us that you're missing some options because you're not an administrator. OK, or a library staff member. Now, when you click on configuration. You get a whole bunch of options, but the one that you're looking for is authority file. And if it doesn't show, scroll it up because it might be a bit further down. But it's the authority file that you want to get into. And this is where all your authority entries are created. We create a lot of authority entries on the fly. So if you're in cataloging and you want to put into the catalog that this book is going into this particular location, not a problem. All you need to do is uh, go to the authority file and go to the location authority file and it'll be there. And that's how you get on. OK, so same applies for sub location, same applies for cost center, same applies for subjects. You can manually do them on the fly or you can just come to the authority editor. Now, if you're a new person, okay, there's all your authority files. We're only going to deal with the ones that you really need to do because it requires these maintenance items, okay? Class grade. In other words, the year level of every borrower on your system. When you click on class grade, all your different class grades will come up here if they've been imported. If we've imported your data, they'll be here. If we did a patron import, they will be here. The only problem is they're going to be empty. It's only a record that's created. So you have to go into each one of these and create the information in them before you can circulate. So a good example is click on the pencil. 
Okay. And I've just got a question that says, do I have to do this? Absolutely. If you don't, you're not going to be able to circulate to anybody because the class grade authority file tells you the parameters. In other words, how many books they can borrow, how long they can borrow for, can they renew it? If they renew it, does it uh, automatically renew it? And how many days does it renew it for? Can they take more than one copy of the book? If I've got TV for education, can they look at inappropriate content or can I block them from inappropriate content? Or can they borrow, can a junior borrow senior fiction? Can I block that? All those parameters are here. Now, I'm only going to deal with the first one, okay? Now, if you've got uh, 12, which is 1 to 12, you need to do each and every one. If you're 1 to 6, you'll need to do each and every 6. If you're 7 to 12, you'll need to do them as well. So you need to go through every entry on here. The only reason these numbers are here is because you have students in those groupings. And you go, I've got an 07 and an 07A. Yeah, that's because in your admin system, someone's put students in 07, someone else but how does it put students in 07A? So you must do both or you need to talk to help desk. You need to do a global change to merge all your 07As into your 07s, okay? However, that's not stopping you from doing what you need to do before you can use the system. So click on the pencil and the very first thing you need to do, you need to put the security number in there. What's the security number? If this person is set as a security seven, Make sure the number corresponds to their year level. Okay, so a 7 is a 7, an 8 is an 8, a 1 is a 1, a 12 is a 12, a 10 is a 10. And what that means is this particular patron can, the OPAC can be set up to only display material appropriate for year 7 and under. Okay, the OPAC can be set up for that. It's not by default set up for that, but you might want us to set that up takes about two seconds and we can even show you how to do it. Okay, so you can do that. The most important part of that is, can they borrow a book that's flagged as senior fiction? In other words, year 10 and above. What will happen is when this particular patron in a, in a year seven brings you a senior fiction book, the circulation will say, don't give it to him. It's a senior fiction book. Do you want to override? And you can go, yes, I do want to override and give it to him. So that's what that is all about. Okay. So no matter what parameters you set, you can override them at circulation as long as you're logged in as an administrator or you have library rights or circulation rights. Okay. Final borrowing date is self-explanatory. When do you want the book back? Okay. Because the school closes on the 2nd of December. You want everything back on the 1st of December. So every year, you're going to have to go in there and just change that date. The expiry date, we don't use it for anything, but the system requires it. So my recommendation is work out when you're going to retire, add 20 years onto that, and then put that date as the expiry date so you never have to bother with it. Why do we put it in there? Well, if this was a P to 12 school and if this was a year 12 student, I know they're not coming back after the 30th of June. So I could make the expiry date 30 of June, which means that if they're still lingering around the school and try to borrow resources, it'll tell you he's expired. Don't give it to him. You're not going to get it back. That's what's going to happen there. OK, so that's what that is all about. How many books can they borrow? Eight. How long can they borrow it for? Seven days. Can they renew a book that is overdue? They can renew it once. If they press the renew button, how long will it give it to them? Seven days. Can they reserve? They certainly can, but they can only reserve two books. So they're not going to go reserve, 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 and just clog up the whole system. They can only reserve two books. Can they borrow multiple copies of the book? That should be turned off because you do not want them taking a copy of the book if they've already got a copy out on loan. OK, and then patron override, can they override? So if the item they're borrowing is an overnight loan, can they borrow it for seven days? If I say patron can override, then they'll be able to take an overnight loan out for seven days. So only teachers should have those two buttons ticked. That's it. OK, so that's how you need to do. And you need to do it for 
all your parameters on the system, class grid. The next default that you need to do is you need to uh, go into the locations, okay? And make sure that these are all the locations. But you can see there's no place for you to type in a manual location, which means that this authority file can only be inputted from the catalog record, okay? And it'll automatically put in there, okay? But you need to have all your locations. You need to have all your media types, okay? because everything should be in a media type and you can type in the new media and click here. That means when you catalog a book, it'll say, well, you can have an admin book, you can have an audio book, you can have a book, you can have a chart, you can have a uh, fiction, you can have an ebook. You can do all of those things in there automatically. Okay, so you can certainly do that. All right, so those are all the mandatory things that you need to have, okay, on the board. And if you do that, you will find you will have absolutely no issue running SmartSuite Library. Thank you very much for the opportunity.